There are those who say your car is purely to get you from point A to point B. But since you clicked on this video, we're pretty sure you're not one of them. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Whether you're a full-on petrol head or want to brush up on your knowledge of classy vintage motors, this one's for you. Here, we'll be giving our pick of cars it definitely won't hurt to be seen in. They all ooze luxury, they're icons of the age they come from, and they've all raised the bar for car makers, having gone on to influence countless cars since they rolled off the production line. Here we go. Number 1. Bugatti Type 57, 1934-1940 in the last decade and a half, Bugatti's conquered every known record for speed, acceleration, and price. But let's take a quick look at their earlier years. You know, back when they were known for combining Grand Prix victories with a flair for design, and the Type 57 was hailed as one of the most beautiful cars of its time. And a lot of people still agree with that assessment. Among them, none other than Ralph Lauren, who owns a 57 SC Atlantic, one of only three of that specific model to still exist. In fact, the car he owns has such a unique place in automotive history, it's estimated to be worth a staggering $40 million. Yep, you heard that right. At that price, it even puts Bugatti's current model, the Chiron, in the shade. For Bugatti fans, it may not have much in common with current models at first glance. But look at the grille on the front. That's the shape of a horseshoe. Does it look familiar? If you know your recent Bugattis, it'll bring to mind the nose of the Veyron and Chiron. Since their early days, it's been a Bugatti hallmark. Number 2. Porsche 356, 1948 to 1965. When we're talking about icons of the car world, they don't come much bigger than Porsche. Sure, we could have gone for the 911, without a doubt a timeless classic, still going strong after 60 years of production. But because we figure you all know about the 911, we thought we'd go for a lesser known predecessor, the 356. It's no secret that Porsche and Volkswagen share the same heritage, and some of you would know the sleek and streamlined 911 was conceived as an upmarket version of the cute and quirky Volkswagen Beetle. What you might not know is the 356 is the missing link between them. A sporty version of the Beetle when it first came out in 1948 that went on to inspire the 911. Just take a look at all those round bug-eye headlights on all three cars, and the fact they all have the same engine in the back and trunk in the front. Number 3. Maserati A6 GCS Berlinetta, 1953-1954 from their origins making Grand Prix cars over a century ago through to the luxury ones they make today, there aren't many names that get car enthusiasts quite as hot under the bonnet as Maserati. And when it comes to its road vehicles from the past, a special place goes to the A6 GCS Berlinetta. They were so limited edition that only four of them were ever made, and for a lot of Maserati fans, they're the most beautiful car to ever roll off the Maserati production line. The word Berlinetta means a two-seater with a low roof, and even though they were designed to turn heads on the road, these are racers as well. That's why if you look closely, you'll see the refueling cap near the roof, to help fill it up quicker on the racetrack. Out of the four A6 GCS Berlinettas originally made, only three of them still exist. In case you're a Maserati collector with cash to spare, and still can't track any of those three down, don't despair. Any Maserati A6 is considered a classic. Number 4. Ferrari 250 GT California Spider, 1957 Choosing the greatest Ferrari ever definitely is not an easy choice. Some would go for their 2013 supercar, La Ferrari, and we can see why, but as we're talking classics, we've chosen this one, the 250 GT California Spider. Some have called it the best convertible ever. It was based on the 250 Berlinetta. Yep, you know what Berlinetta means. But in case you don't, in the car world, Spider means a sport two-seater with an open roof, and this is one hell of a Spider. Now, we're not exactly sure sure how familiar you are with 80s teen movies, but in case you've watched the 1986 classic Ferris Bueller's Day Off, you'd have seen this car in action. In fact, the entire story revolves around it. As the title tells us, high schooler Ferris bunks off school and persuades his best friend to borrow his dad's prized California Spider for a joyride. The film ends up with the car getting trashed. Luckily, they used a stand-in for that scene because only 37 of the California Spiders still exist. Number 5. Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing, 1957 
Ever since the Mercedes name was trademarked, it's been a synonym for class, producing some of the most elegant cars out there. But not many of them have gull wings that open upwards instead of sideways. But the Mercedes we've chosen, the 300 SL, does. The story of this car goes back to Germany just after World War II. Daimler-Benz's factories had been destroyed by bombing, and even the company directors thought Mercedes was done. But against all odds, just six years later, they took the world's Grand Prix circuits by storm with a W194 racer, and it wasn't long before the road version followed, the 300 SL. Daimler-Benz engineers did make a few modifications in the transition from the racer to the road vehicle. Racing drivers had complained of engine overheating, so they solved this by adding the super sleek grills on the side. And those grills have become a trademark feature of some of Mercedes' sportier models to this day. For an updated version of the 300 SL, look no further than their more recent high-end offerings, the SLS AMG, and you'll see not just the same side grills, but also those upward opening gullwing doors in homage to the 300 SL. Number 6. Cadillac 1959 Eldorado Biarritz Convertible 1959 it's time for the first American car on our list. As you'd expect from American autos, it boasts muscle, flair, and plenty of space, and in this case, quite a bit of luxury too. The Cadillac Eldorado in production from 1952 to 2002 was positioned at the top end of the Cadillac line with several versions coming out, but for many Cadillac enthusiasts, the 1959 is the one to beat them all. When it comes to size, it doesn't mess around at 19 feet or 5.7 meters long, and its futuristic design still looks pretty sci-fi 60 years later, especially thanks to its crazy over-the-top tail fins. Stand behind them and you might actually think you're standing behind a small jet plane, all of which adds up to make it one of the most recognizable cars ever built. Number 7. Jaguar E-Type 1961-1975 when this car came out in 1961, it caused quite a stir. Not many cars would fare well competing head-on with the likes of Ferrari and Maserati, but in the 1960s, Jaguar did just that, and they did a fine job of it. Not only did they beat them on speed, with the E-Type getting up to 150 miles an hour, they also did it at under half the price, at the time, $3,000. No wonder the E-Type became a favorite of the 60s jet set, dazzling with its high performance and sleek design, not to mention a state-of-the-art suspension system, which Jaguar kept on using until the 90s. Even Enzo Ferrari called it the most beautiful car in the world, and we're certainly not going to argue. In the 60s, they might have been a bargain at $3,000, but don't expect to get them for those prices these days, even after you adjust for inflation. E-types are known to auction for crazy prices. In 2013, one went for $467,000 at Sotheby's in Manhattan. Number 8. Lincoln Continental Convertible, 1961-1969 Next up, a true American classic, the one many think of as THE luxury American car. It was built by Ford Corporation under their high-end division, Lincoln, and while Continentals still roll off their production lines to this day, for a lot of connoisseurs, it's the 60s convertible that really takes the spotlight. And lately, these super cool cruisers have enjoyed a spike in demand thanks to a few high-profile appearances on our screens. If you've watched Entourage, you'll recognize the Continental from the opening credits, and any Maroon 5 fan out there knows it from the music video Sugar. You know, the one where Adam takes the gang cruising around crashing every wedding party they can? But thankfully, no crashing of the car. With appearances like this, it's definitely boosted its credentials as the car to be seen in with the top down on your buddies in tow. On a darker note though, you might also recognize it from one of the most famous historical events of the last century, because John F. Kennedy was in a Lincoln convertible when he was assassinated in 1963. Number 9. Aston Martin DB5, 1963-1965 did you really expect us to get through a video on classic cars without mentioning James Bond? And when it comes to the 007's cars, there really is only one we could choose, the Aston Martin DB5. That's because it's the first true Bond car, the perfect gadget for the super spy, even though it took until the third film in the franchise to make an appearance. In 1964's Goldfinger, you can see it in all of its glory with Sean Connery at the wheel. 
also with a pop-up bulletproof shield, machine guns built into the sidelines, rotating number plates, extendable tire slashers in the back wheel, an ejector seat, an oil slick delivery system, and, wait for it, a built-in telephone. This was 1964, remember? Since then, it's become one of the longest-running product placements in film history, and Bond might have been linked with other car brands over the years. But when James Bond thinks cars, they think Aston Martin. And in case you really want one with all the spy gadgets we mentioned, you're in luck because Aston Martin is about to roll out the DB5 Goldfinger continuation. Yep, with replicas of all of those gadgets. Keep in mind it'll cost you 2.75 million pounds before taxes. The guns have the light and sound effects instead of real bullets, and the tire shredders aren't real either. And to cap it off, it isn't actually road legal, which has got to make it one of the most expensive toys you can possibly buy. Number 10. Lamborghini Miura, 1966 to 1973. And as for our last pick, the car that really started the war between Ferrari and Lamborghini, which is still raging today. Ferruccio Lamborghini, dissatisfied with his Ferrari, decided to make his own luxury sports car. But it wasn't until the Miura came along three years later that he really gave Ferrari something to worry about. When the Miura was released, it was the fastest production road car, with a top speed of 170 miles per hour. It got up to 60 miles per hour in just five seconds, and didn't exactly do poorly in the looks department either, thanks to its pointy nose and sleek design. And details like the doors designed to look like bullhorns, and the eyelashes around the headlights to give it added sex appeal, as if it needed any more. It's one of the cars that defined the 1960s cool and Italian Dolce Vita, featured in the opening scene of The Italian Job, the original version. Top Gear have called the Miura the daddy of all supercars, the one where the concept of the supercar began. So Aluxers, what other cars do you think we should put on this list? Let us know in the comments. And of course, for sticking with us until the end, we definitely have a bonus car for you. The McLaren F1, 1992-1998. Of course, we had to end this list with something pretty special, and a little different from the others on the list. Now, if you were thinking of recent Bugattis, oh, we love them too, but they're just a little too recent to be labeled classic. So, that's why we went for the supercar to beat all supercars before the Bugatti Chiron came along, the McLaren F1. It was designed with the goal of being the ultimate road car, but there were only 106 made. And from 1994, it held on to the record for the fastest production car for over a decade, hitting speeds of 240 miles per hour, as well as breaking a few records at the time and looking the part too. It can boast a few very unique features, like the single row of three seats with the driver sitting in the middle, the gold plate in the engine compartment, no, not just for bling, it's there as a heat shield, and a modem. Back in the 90s, having one of those built into your car was pretty cutting edge, and it allowed you to connect to a computer to diagnose problems. Since its glory days in the 1990s, the F1 may have had its speed records broken by Bugatti, but thanks to their status as collector's items, they'll cost you quite a bit more than most Bugattis. At auction, you can expect to pay between $14 million and $20 million for one, just so you know. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more quality content every day from us here at Alux.